All right, so in this video, we're gonna look at determining the equilibrium concentrations of reactants and products for an equilibrium reaction. Now let's say, for example, we said that we started with 0.4 molarity of N2O4, so our reactant. So we added that into a container, right? Both of these are gases, so we have maybe a, a metal container that we put them into, and then we're gonna let, the, let them react to give us the equilibrium that we would see between these two. <clears throat> now, if we were to say this is just a one-way reaction, if I start with 0.4 molarity of N2O4, and it completely reacts, we would say, well, we would get twice as that, right? Two to one, 0.8 molarity of NO2. Well, like, as we know, right, we have these equilibrium reactions where we have, it can go forward, but it can all go reverse. And so then we have a ratio of our products to reactants, our Kc value. And our Kc expression here would be our product concentration squared, right, because our coefficient is two here, divided by our reactant concentration to the first order. And so we know there's a, a distinct ratio between these at equilibrium, right? So this is my initial concentration. So if I'm trying to identify what my equilibrium concentration would be, I need to figure out, well, how can I express what I know, the initial concentrations, with respect to this equilibrium concentration? Okay, so for us to do that, we're gonna look at the initial change and equilibrium concentrations and ways that we can express that. Well, we know that we added in 0.4 molarity of N2O4. We didn't say we added any NO2 into it, so we just added our reactants. We didn't start with any. So if we're gonna look at, as we go from our liquid, uh, equilib our, our initial, excuse me, to our equilibrium, we know that our N2O4 concentration is gonna decrease and our NO2 concentration is gonna increase, right? Because our NO2 can't decrease. One has to increase, one has to decrease on each side of our reaction. So if we look at this, we'd say, well, how much is it gonna decrease by? Well, we don't know. That's our goal. We need to figure out how much is it gonna decrease by? If it was just a one-ray reaction, this would decrease by 0.4, and this would increase by 0.8, but it's not. We know at equilibrium, the ratio between our products to reactants is 4.50. So then what we can do is we'll, let's identify our change as X, right? So it's gonna decrease by some amount. As N2O5, N2O4 decreases by X, NO2, based upon the coefficients two to one, is going to increase by 2x, right? It's going to increase by twice that much. Well, the equilibrium concentration is going to be the sum of those two. And so that's going to be 0.4 minus x, and this would be 2x plus 0, okay? So now we have an expression for our equilibrium concentrations. And we know since these are at equilibrium, we know that the ratio between those two is equal to our Kc value. So what we could do is we could say, well, let's plug in our expression that we would have for Kc and our equilibrium concentrations. So we'd say our Kc value of 4.50 equals the concentration of NO2, which we said was 2x, divided by the concentration of N, uh, N2O4, which was 0 0.40 minus x. Okay, so now the rest of this is one equation one unknown, and our goal would, they, would be then to determine what x is. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that for you to look at this and say, well, how can I solve for x? How am I gonna go about deciding and deciphering what the change is, and then how that relates back to our equilibrium concentrations? So now remember, when we're looking at our equilibrium concentrations, think about what do I know that I start with? How can I quantify what our changes or the ratio of our changes. And our equilibrium will always be the sum of what we started with and how much we changed by. And then that's gonna correspond back to the known relationship between products and reactants, our Kc value. So hopefully this gives us a good idea of how to set this up. Uh, the initial setup just leads us to something where we have to algebraically solve for our change. And then we see how that leads us back to what our equilibrium concentrations would be.